Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros. Kids, every morning you hear me talking about the same thing. Uh, powering down a liquid IV on the way to work. I reached, I finally on, on RPR, I just said, dude, can they not come on as a sponsor? Because I'm drinking this shit every single day. It would be the easiest thing for me to promote in the world. And we reached out and, uh, and you said, yes, we, yeah, let's do it. Uh, thank God. So finally I was like, dude, come on the show. Let me talk about it. Uh, Brandon Cohen's here. How you doing, buddy? Good. Thanks for having me on. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, man. I look. I asked you the pronunciation right before we came on. I didn't know if it was a cone, like uh, like my boy Mark Cone, who sings "Walking in Memphis." I'm a gigantic cone head. I what? love "Walking in Memphis." What song? "Walking in Memphis." How's that go? I'm walking in Memphis, walking with my feet ten feet off a beer. Yeah, I just wanted to hear you say it. Okay. I knew what it was. Okay, the whole okay. time. I didn't know. Did I, you never know who's a cone head and who's not? There was a remake version of it later, and uh, I wasn't too amped about it. Uh, so obviously whenever I can give Mark Cohn a shine, I will, but you're Cohen and, uh, and I didn't know if you were related. So I wanted to get that out of the way at the top. You're not related to Mark Cohn then. Okay. Not, not related and different pronunciation. All right. Just check. Hey, I'm, I, I always want to check the closer I get to Cohn, the closer I get to, to divinity. Yeah. A lot of people say I look like Wesley Snipes, but we're not related either. Yeah. No relation whatsoever. No, we just kind of look similar in the face mostly. Yeah. 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 Um, I wanted to chat with you here about two things. One, do you have stock? Cause if so, I would buy it. I drink this every single day. Uh, two, do you know whoever makes core water? Because every morning I dump it in one of those things of core water, not a sponsor. Um, but God damn it. If it doesn't fit perfectly in there and that's the right amount of liquid I need to get my day started. Well, one, always got stock for you. So just, just let me know when you need more. And I don't know anyone personally at Core Water, but it sounds like it would be a great collab. I, yes, um, man. I don't, it, it's, it's a weird tube. It's like a long little tube. And it's got a wide mouth too, which is yeah. good for pouring things into. I feel like that's probably why you like it. I have a wide mouth. Yeah. So um, obviously there's a lot of jokes you could insert there in dicks. We're not going to do that today, Dan. We're yeah. going to be classy. We're going to be above that. You today. could probably fit that entire liquid IV uh, double wall container into your mouth. Right Easily. It, like without, without question, I could. That one, the white one. Without right question, I could. Now, when you said <laughs> stock, I didn't mean like stock up on the supplies. I meant uh, like, are you guys going to be an IPO soon? I feel uh, like your company is big enough. Is it? We actually, we actually just got acquired back in uh, October. So we were, I've been, I was running it for about nine years, like bootstrapping it. And then the last like two or three years that just, you know, the business absolutely took off, which has been incredible. And then we actually got acquired uh, by Unilever um, in October of 2020, which was pretty incredible. That's amazing, man. Unilever I, is publicly traded. Yeah. When that, when that, are, when that call comes down, what's the first thing you did that night? Because everybody always wants to know, like when you get acquired, you worked your ass off. What do you do that evening after you get that call? Yeah, it was it was a super weird time, right? It was like October, uh, October of 2020, and like COVID's going on, and it's like you could like normally I would just have a you know I'd get all my friends and family together and and just celebrate, but we had to do a lot of stuff remote and via uh, Zoom and FaceTime and stuff. So it sort of was like this really delayed thing, which I think was probably a blessing because I probably would have gone out and done cra some crazy things, but because it was COVID, uh, you know it. It, it didn't all happen at the same time. So now six months later in April, uh, now I'm starting to really enjoy it. And, and, you know, now that the vaccine's out and stuff like that, I'm going to real, really be able to open it up and have a little bit of fun. Cool. Hey, so when did you say you guys got acquired? Uh, October of uh, 2020. So like six months ago. Oh, wow. Man, dude, I, if I were you, I would rage. I, I've had some <laughs> friends that have got their, their companies acquired. Um, one of them, geez, uh, the amount of cocaine he did that night was, <laughs> I, I mean, absurd where I was like, dude, you're going to die, like live so you can spend some of this money wow. and enjoy yourself. And he was like, I never thought I would have this He's in my life. Alive. Um, you know, we're going through a similar process right now in the, in the early stages of it with a hard seltzer that we have coming out. Um, and you know, we've been developing this for about eight months now. We finally dialed in the flavors and that's getting ready to come out. And that's, that's always the goal, right? Is to get acquired and live an easier life, but still maintain control of your product. Are they cool like that? Do they, do they have you, uh, you know, still dialed into the flavors and all that stuff? 
Yeah, the, you know, part of the reason why we went with them, we had a lot of different uh, groups, you know, that we were talking to, like big, big uh, acquirers. And the reason we went with them was because, um, you know, we were really able to keep running the business the way the way we've been running it. So that was a big reason we chose them. Um, and yeah, so, you know, we're running it, you know, mostly the way we used to, obviously a bunch of new resources and, you know, there's, we were only sold in the United States and now there's all this opportunity for global expansion, which was a, one of the big reasons we did this aside from the financial reasons. Mm -hmm. um, so the, br the brand can become a global international brand, you know, when you're growing that fast, you don't have the resources to do some things and international was one of those. And so, um, yeah, now, now we're, you know, we're rolling things out internationally and uh, yeah, it's, it was been a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool deal. Yeah, because it's it's hard and nobody really knows or appreciates how hard it is, right? You got to kind of be in it to grow organically. You mean, I mean, to, we, to grow organically we and all, we put all of our own money into this. Too. Yeah. And, and to scale, when you're when you're scaling quickly and you're like, oh, shit, I, I got to hire more employees and everything yeah. else and then benefits and, and all that other stuff. And it's on you, right? It's not on a, a board of people or anything else. And you're like, oh, my God. I can't sleep at night. Mm. Um, I feel awful, and uh, and therefore I'm drinking liquid IV every single morning. But uh, yeah, how fast did you guys scale? And and like when did you start? I feel like I heard about you guys. The first time I had a pack of liquid IV was two and a half years ago. Uh, I was at a neighborhood party the night before with the kids. Kids are all out running around. Parents are all getting drunk. And then uh, my buddy in the morning was just like, "Hey, dude," he brought over liquid IVs. Uh, for all of us. And he was like, this will get rid of the hangover. And I was like, come on, man. Uh, yeah, I've, I've heard that before. I know. I know. I popped it in my drink and I felt great. Like in an hour later, 30 minutes later. And I was like, oh shit. Um, but I didn't feel like I, I had heard about you until then. Uh, what year did you guys get started? Yeah, it's crazy to hear that because most people, I hear the same thing around 2019 is right when the business started to really you know, take off and it was starting to spread by word of mouth, like the same exact way you heard about it. But the craziest part, which should give a lot of entrepreneurs hope and you guys hope as well as you're getting going is like, we. St I started in 2012, I was 24. And basically from 2012 to 2017, we, we barely made any money. Like we did in total in all, you know, six of those years, we did like under a million dollars in sales. And wow. then once we hit 20, 2018, Things started to percolate. We got some retailers to buy in. You know, sampling was a huge thing. People are trying the product. And we always knew that when people tried it, they would love it. You know, they would fall in love with the product. Um, just like, you know, similar to how it happened to you. And we got into retail and then we did this like celebrity investor round, which ended up being like, kind of like, uh, got, gave a lot of brand awareness to the business. And so we went from under a million in sales, you know, in the first six years to then you know, hundreds of millions two and a half years later. So it was just a wild, like wild hockey stick. And I think, you know, building a foundational solid business, um, you know, where it's really solid and sturdy and then it can actually withstand that scale was, was a big part of how we won. And I mean, you gotta have a great product. You gotta have a great team. There's mm -hmm. all of those things. But I think the fact that we did grow it so grassroots and organically for six years with like, you know, just, like really solidifying everything when we finally did hit that scale it was uh it was pretty insane yeah i, I bet it's funny that's what dan and i've been doing for the last week is meeting with celebrity investors and things like that to, to get brand awareness out there um you see, very similar story in all of this uh i i love when entrepreneurs come on this program in particular because it's one of those things where i feel like everybody out there thinks they have a great idea but they never think it is possible um when did, when did the lightning strike for you? And you were like, man, I think I can do this. And I, I think I can get this out around the world and people will love it as much as I do. Yeah, I mean, I have so many entrepreneurs reach out and they're like, you know, they have an idea, but there's all these reasons not to start, whether it's like, you know, financially or family things or their other job or whatever. And I always say like, like the key to growing something incredible is like, you just got to start, like you got to start going. And I think deep down, like I'm like obsessive and relentless and super competitive. And like, I always like thought, like, I really believe that somehow I was going to make it win. But I mean, those first three or four years when like I'm in my mid twenties and all my friends are out partying and traveling and they're all making six figures at some, you know, BS job and settling down and, you know, with family and stuff. And I was just like grinding. I was walking into liquor stores, handing them a box of products saying, put it on the shelf for free. If it sells, I'll, you know, uh, you know, you can buy the next round. I'd send my friends in to go buy it. 
I would then Venmo charge them. And like, I was grinding for four or five <laughs> years while everyone else was living this, you know, this, this awesome twenties life. And so, um, yeah, man, it's just, I, I think getting started is key. And then, I, I mean, just truly like, you got to believe in yourself because you're going to hear so many no's and people are going to laugh at you. And, you know, even people you, that, that you love and that trust you, uh, you know, they, it's hard for them to see a vision. And so you just got to really believe in yourself and just keep one foot in front of the other. And the longer you stay afloat, the longer you have a chance to blow up, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, I've, I've seen it with um, a bunch of my friends and then you even see it in podcasts. Like, you know, even when we pivoted and we were like, Hey, we're going to start a media and get in a podcast. Mm -hmm. Everybody was like, why would you do, why would you stop doing movies to do that? And I was like, well, movies feel like they're kind of dying. Like comedy, you know, as a comedian, comedy feels like it's kind of dying <laughs> and everything's being looked over or, or, you know, there's too many hands in the, mm -hmm. in the, in the fruit punch. Uh, not enough alcohol in there and things were, you know, just kind of boring and the same. And I was like, here, at least in this space, I can say whatever the fuck I want all day long. That, that's the same with Dan. And, yeah. um, and then we changed and then, you know, now everybody's come around of like this podcast thing you're doing. Wow. That's like a real thing. Um, and, and yeah, it, it's, uh, it's a similar thing where people do laugh at you and they tell you you're going to be a fucking failure and, and what is this and why and, and everything else. Um, for you, how many employees do you have right now? We, um, we're over 50 now. Yeah, over 50. Shit. And, and just back on your last point, like the way I think about it now that I've sort of got to the other side is like if people aren't laughing and, and, and talking behind your back about it and saying it's not going to work, then it's probably not that cool or that big of an idea <laughs> because like you kind of like that means it's probably something that's pretty cool and pretty good. Like people, people talking trash, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, did you ever go to somebody and say, hey, would you like to invest in this? And they were like, no, dude, I think this is going to be a bullshit idea like a friend of yours. Like hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I mean, and the people and the people who did, you know, I had fr I had friends and family in my first round in like 2013 who put in like whatever money they had to their name, like twenty five hundred bucks, five thousand bucks. Like we weren't like some established big company where we said, you know, minimum of twenty five K investment. And like those people like made a seven figure check when we got acquired. Really? That had yeah. to have been an unbelievable feeling. Yeah. It, it, I, honestly, it took me about six months to like totally comprehend, but like. 80 of my closest friends, family, employees who all had equity in the company, like, you know, all had this incredible win. And so I was going through my own massive transition. You know, when you live in a 800 square foot apartment for seven years, running your business out of there, then you get this acquisition. So I was going through my own, my own big transition. But when I finally had a chance to like comprehend what it meant to my mom, my sister, um, you know, my dad, like my closest friends who got involved, like it's pretty wild, like a pretty life changing event, you know, like all, all everyone I know in my circle right now is, even though this, this isn't the only thing, but it's very tangible. They're all buying a house. It's like so cool. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's because of this product that you came up with. Um, Crazy idea. Crazy idea that everyone laughed at, but they believed. So it was pretty cool. Yeah. Holy shit. Um, that's wild. Uh, you ever have athletes hit you up or celebrities saying, hey, man, can you send me some product for free? And you're like, dude, yeah, just buy it. <laughs> I mean, I just, I, they hit me up all the time. I just say yes. And then I send it. <laughs> <laughs> it's smart. I figure it's just, it's more sampling. It's more sampling. And the reason I ask is you never know what to do in that situation. We had a buddy with a, a buddy of ours with a water company. Yeah. And I felt like we were always driving him to the store to ship out like all this water for celebrities mm -hmm. and things like that. And I'm like, dude, are you going to make any money? You're going to go bankrupt just sending out free samples all over the place one would have to imagine that's that's how you kind of started right yeah i mean what's even harder than that because at least you can justify it to yourself that like they have a following if they share it or tell somebody like it might help the business when you just have like friends like reach out and they want to buy it for free i'm like yo can you guys just support us please like <laughs> yeah. we're trying to get the business off the ground yeah yeah we get we get that as well over here mm. hey I'm man sure. yeah or, or with even with friends of ours well they'll go through us they'll be like hey man can you give me black raffle t-shirts or anything and i'm like yeah i don't work for them yeah no no i don't just go to their website it's like 25 bucks yeah uh get a t-shirt if you want a t-shirt uh I don't, I don't understand it um so where where you're at now with the company are you guys looking to acquire other companies or what are you doing now yeah so uh we 
once we got acquired by Unilever, the goal with Liquid IV is just to keep growing it. Like, you know, be a multi-billion dollar global brand would be the goal. Like, hydrate people, help them live better lives around the world. You know, we have this give back mission where with each purchase, we donate a serving to someone in need, which has been so cool. Like, we've got to travel to places like Uganda and Haiti and Nepal and help these people where truly hydration is like, you know, life or death, really, which has been really cool. Um, yeah, so Liquid IV is probably not looking to acquire companies right now. I actually... About a month ago, I actually um, stepped down as CEO just to, to focus on some other things. So, you know, always will be founder and involved with the business. But like in terms of operating a day to day, um, you know, it was a nine year thing. And I was like, I just was, uh, you know, I had some other exciting things going and I was just sort of ready to live my life a little because I sort of sacrificed so much of the last 10 years. So, um, you know, it's still my baby and I love it, but, uh, you know, no longer running it day to day. Yeah. And that's got to be a good feeling. I mean, you know. I've, I've, I've owned a couple companies now on my own. It's just, dude, it's your 14 hour days nonstop. Uh, yeah, you want to enjoy yourself and, and relax a little bit. And like you were saying earlier, you missed your twenties kind of, um, now look, you're still good looking dude. Um, <laughs> sharp as shit. Like you're still good to go. Right. It wasn't, it's not like you're a 300 pound man who is, you're, you're not Steve Bannon and you're out of gas towards the end. And you're just like, I don't know if I'm going to live anymore, but I made a shit ton of money. Um, are you doing anything fun coming up? Are you, we're going to the Kentucky Derby. You going to the Kentucky Derby? Nice man. Yeah. Let me know. I'll, I'll hitch a ride with you guys. That sounds epic. Uh, we're going, yeah, you know, all right. Well, well, I'll talk to you offline a little bit here. That'd be fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, now that I, now that everything's opening up a little bit um, and, uh, you know, I, I'm excited to travel and just do some social stuff that I've sort of haven't been, you know, I didn't do for nine years. And because of COVID, it's been, you know, pretty, pretty uh, few and far between. So I'm excited to travel. You know, I'm a, I played golf in college. So I'm excited to play some golf and just just uh, enjoy that a little bit. And then I got my hands in a couple other business things that I can't really talk about yet. But I'm super excited for like the next phase of uh, the next phase of creating products and services that'll help people. So that's awesome. Um, where did you go to college? Loyola Marymount here in L.A. Oh, shit. LMU. All right. Yeah. yeah. Where, yeah. where are you guys based? We're based in Austin, Texas right now. Oh, sweet. Yeah, but I, I, I lived in L.A. for 18 years. Dan lived in Oakland uh, yeah. for, for a while. So yeah. we're always out in L.A. shooting all the time. I like speaking of shooting. I like how when you said the word Oakland, I instinctively reached over and touched my firearm. That's on the table. <laughs> Just in case. Because <laughs> <laughs> you never know in yeah. Oakland. Now the 800 square foot apartment makes total sense where, yeah. That's the yeah. they're just getting ready, people ready to go to prison later. Yeah, <laughs> shit, you're lucky to get that in L.A. Yeah. So you were doing the whole thing out of L.A. Whole thing out of L.A. Yeah, yep. Ish, those taxes hit you. you. Did you did you move the the, the LLC before you got acquired? At least, um, that no, I, I I thought about it. It was one of these things where like, you know. You, you could save some money short term, but it would be such a stress on the business that it would probably hurt the top line growth. So it probably would end up balancing yeah. out. So I would stay here. My family's here and stuff, my, you know, my parents, my sister and stuff. So I ended up just staying here, but you know, about to pay taxes and I'm like, ouch, this yeah. hurts. It's insane, <laughs> isn't it? Cause the, just the state tax alone in California is 14 and a half. I think it's going to 16 and a half, maybe at the end of the year. Uh, we'll see how this, this tax season goes, wow. but yeah, I was, more than happy to uh, hop on down the road and get out of that mess. Yeah, even as a business owner, I mean, capital gains are less than income tax typically, but mm -hmm. that's still a pain in the ass. Yeah. 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 If, if I you're, mean, the, the capital gains, the capital gains are brutal. And yeah, I have, I, I have so many entrepreneur friends who are, I mean, Austin must just be popping right now. Everyone I know is yeah. moving there. Yes. Yeah, it, it is. Yeah. And, uh, you know, for good and bad. Um, I've had this mm -hmm. conversation numerous times over the last few days. Um, great for us because of what we do. And, you know, all of the biggest podcasts have now moved here. So we're able to share guests and advertisers and all that other stuff. Um, bad for uh, the, the residents of Texas. Well, it's bad for people that are trying to buy and build houses right now. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Because the market, yeah. I mean, not look, it's great for builders and sellers. Yes. But that's how it is. Right. There's ebbs and flows in the real estate market. You just got to fucking be patient and make right, make good decisions. Yeah. Yeah. Know, the housing know. market is through the roof here, but it's a beautiful city and, it, and it's fun. And I, I understand why everybody's moving here just out of, you know, the simple beauty of it and all the things you're able to do. You know, for me and Dan, we were just in LA shooting with Chuck Liddell for, for his new show, which is out now. And, uh, 
we spent you know a week there and it seems like every time we go back to shoot the homelessness and and uh and the businesses are just going like just shutting down um some of my favorites closed last week arc light i lost we lost arc light uh the Cinema, yeah. cinerama dome was my favorite <laughs> yeah it's crazy i mean i was just in santa monica yesterday and i haven't been out there a lot but it's like it kind of feels like it's like the walking dead out there like mm-hmm. all the businesses are shut like the homelessness is way up it's really sad i mean and and, and then i've got you know i've, I've gone on a few trips to places like scottsdale or austin or miami and it's just like the night and day it used to be like everyone came to la <laughs> yeah you know and like everyone wanted to be in la and now it's like it's just it's really weird i you know i think i think you know give it 12 to 24 months i think things will start to become more normal but there's a lot of reasons to live in a place like Austin. I mean, when you really think about it, I mean, 360, it's, it's pretty cool. It's yeah. Pretty no, cool. no state tax down yeah. here. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I think you might be a little uh, overly optimistic about that 12 to 24 month thing, to be honest. All right. I, I, uh, I tend to be overly optimistic. So, well, I got you this Sounds far, right. so I'll stay with it. I guess. Yeah. Who are we to tell you otherwise? <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah. You're richer than us. So we're going to believe you on that one. But uh, <laughs> the Scottsdale thing is interesting because I've, I, I've had a, a couple friends who've moved to, uh, to Scottsdale, Arizona. And I was like, I, Arizona is, is real goddamn hot. Um, but the nightlife there pops off. And, uh, and there's a lot of fun, cool shit to do there um, in Scottsdale. Who is on the program who's talking about hunting down cougars? And, Archie uh, Bradley. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Archie Bradley, the current closer for the Phillies, although Archie. he's uh, he's hurt. Right? He's got an yeah. oblique injury right now. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but uh, yeah. yeah, a lot of, a lot of women. I actually fun times. I, I, yeah, I actually, uh, I, when I first graduated from school before I started Liquid IV, I, um, I worked for the Arizona Diamondbacks. So I lived in Scottsdale for a couple of years. Mm. And it's, uh, I mean, it, it gets hot for sure in the summer, but it's such a fun place. I mean, the nightlife, restaurants, and then like for me, golf, like there's just tons of golf courses and it's a pretty damn cool place to live. It is. Uh, it, it is. I, I've, I've gone there a few times and, uh, and I've enjoyed it the summers though. Like whenever somebody says it's dry, heat, oh, don't worry, it's dry heat. It's not human. It's dry heat. They're a fucking liar. No, like, it's yes. not. Come on, man. Yeah, I, yeah. Here in Austin, the first few months where it starts to warm up, it's still like coming out of hurricane seasons. So there's still a lot of humidity in the air. Yeah. But yeah. later, like in a month or two, it's going to be 100 degrees every single day. But it is different. It's not the same as being. I grew up in South Carolina. You grew up in Georgia. Yeah, you, you know Georgia, the yeah. difference between fucking humid, humid heat and, and dry. There, yeah. Dry heat's a real thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah now, yeah. when the dry heat is 120 goddamn degrees, that's where the problem gets gets uh into focus right it feels like somebody's following you around with a blow dryer right behind you just on full blast yeah but i don't mind it i don't mind as long as uh everybody else is sweaty i'm fine being sweaty but i'm not doing it if like i'm not gonna work out or run or any of that stupid shit no no you know what i mean no you're not leaving if i'm house. sweating for some reason other than it just being warm outside i'm not happy about that sure 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 uh you married single single Dude. no kids yeah I, you were on yeah. dr- you were on drinking bro ass and uh, they were I like was. man <laughs> that dude I he they, after after the show ends they were like that dude I bet just crushes it in real life like <laughs> outside of it um, my wife is on is that, that re- show she was like hey, you guys got to have him on he's fucking hilarious and he's cool um, and uh, and I was like all right rad we'll we'll have him on but they were like dude I bet he just crushes. Uh, <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, it, it was uh, it was a fun. I had a fun show with them, and it's funny. Like, I mean, truly, it sounds kind of corny, I guess, but I was so like laser focused for the last. Like, I was just head down. I think that's why I'm excited now. You know, I I just we got acquired, and now I have some some time to like you know date a little bit and and uh, just explore that side of things. So different than when I was on with them, I was still sort of head down. Now I'm I'm more head up. Let's let's put it that way. The only wild thing though is you know you sit down. At, at, at Carabas or wherever you're taking your young lady. Uh, it's uh, definitely not Carabas. You never know. No, I don't want to. I sure. I don't think there is a Carabas in LA. Don't, I don't want to, to throw a, a, a fine chain restaurant under the bus stand, but let's say, a, let's say you go to that Olive Garden in Westwood, you know, um, you know, the one I'm talking about that Olive Garden. I do know. I yeah, do. you do that, that Olive Garden in Westwood, right by the UCLA campus. Let's say you're taking a lady out and you sit down and she says, Oh, you know, I mentioned you through a friend of a friend. We thought we might like each other and blah, 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 blah. What do you do? And you drop, I own liquid IV. It's pretty much game over. Like you're on another level now where before, if you said, oh, I got this product, it's going to be awesome or whatever. How much money do you have? 
None. And I live in an 800 square foot apartment. Cool. Fuck off. That was the LA way. Now you're going to be able to drop this hammer and then it's, it's game on. It's, it's funny how, uh, how quickly that changes. There's so many times where I would try and explain what I did. Like, wait, so you, you sell the powder in the stick and like, what do you, like in the beginning, there were never products where you poured the stick into water. Like we were one of the first to do that. Right. So yeah. I would try and explain it. And they're like, all right, yeah, whatever. And then, you know, fast forward eight years where it's a little little different story for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, fuck. And then and there's nothing worse, too. And then you'll get, if they don't know the products, you'll be like, I don't understand how you don't know what that is. And it's just, oh, that sounds fun. That sounds like a fun thing. Because mine was like yeah, with, totally. with, with the movies. It was like, uh, oh, what movies have you been in? I haven't seen that one. I haven't I, seen that one. I haven't I, seen that one. I don't yeah. know that one. And I'm just like, oh, my God, I'm a fucking loser. I'm a fucking loser. I haven't, uh, <laughs> I still haven't figured out how to, tell anybody what I do now. No, like, no. What, what do you do? I'm like, oh. I talk for a living. Oh yeah. It's, 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 yeah, it's, it's one of those things where you're like, like are oh. you on the radio? I'm like, no, no one is on the fucking radio <laughs> yeah, anymore. No you one's on the me? radio anymore. Jesus Christ. And they're like, oh, you have a podcast. And I'm like, that's fun and flirty. How many listeners? That's the, you know, drinking bros is like 10.3 million. What? What? Oh my God. I, I, I didn't know that. it. Yeah. And you're like, man, but then you have to keep telling people who you are and all that other shit. And that sucks. Like you don't have to. You do. If somebody asks me who I am, I say the same thing I say on my Instagram bio. I'm the biggest piece of shit you've never heard of. Yeah, yeah. Right? For, for, but I, like, for, for instance, when Real I'm saying simple. when you have to tell people what you do, I meant for like uh, I had to. I'm helping my father get a car for his birthday, and uh, you know you have to fill out the application of what you do for a living. Oh yeah, just fill, just skip that and give them the bank statement. That's what I do. I, I turn it on all at once, <laughs> so they're like, oh, and they're like. Oh, I'm like, all right, cool. Can we end this right now? Yeah, it doesn't we, matter what I do. This conversation? I sell oranges on the side of the road. And I make I money love doing that. it. Shut the fuck I up. Yeah, that. but that'll be your new world, my man. And God damn it, if I'm not excited for you, uh, for real, for real. It's, Thank it, you. It's going to be a blast. How old are you right now? I'm 33. Okay, we're the same age. Um, no, I'm, joking. Right. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm totally joking. You look great. You look great. <laughs> That's the problem. Once you get Dang. to a certain age, you have to start saying you're older, right? Because yeah. you, you want you want to look good for because you want to look good for a while. Then you want to look good for a yeah. certain age. It, like, it, like it, start it, telling people you're sixty and they go, Oh, you look great for sixty. You're like, I, yeah, I know. Just you know, clean living. Yeah, right. yeah. The other thing about it is, all right, shit, thinking about this out loud right now, you're 33 and you just sold the, you know, the company and all that other shit. Like, man, that's awesome. You're going to have a rad life. I mean, most Thanks, people, dude. it's yeah, like, yeah. hey, I'm 70. You know, they've got a dead parrot clung to their thing and they just got out of the coal mine. And, you know, that's life, kid. You know, and, and I yeah. pack a Pall Mall filterless. For you, yeah, you're 33. Yeah, for him, he's going to do whatever be, you want. For him, he's going to be packing cocaine into the uh, end of a parliament instead. Yes. We don't get sponsored by cocaine or parliament. Or parliaments. We yeah. can say that. That's called yeah. a cocoa puff in the biz, yeah. by the way. Cocoa puff in the biz. <laughs> but, I, I uh, think we could probably get sponsored by cocaine. Maybe. Well, I mean, if milk can do commercials on television, milk is not a goddamn business. It's a product. I, I will say this. We did just get sponsored for a show entirely about cocaine yesterday. So. That's true, yeah, but it's that's different. Wow. It was it on the enforcement side of cocaine, not on the usury side. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> RSL, it might have hit you up about it. Um, it's, it's yeah. yeah, it's awesome. It starts in June, but uh, it is the top of the top. Uh, when we, we head offline, I'll, we'll chat about it, but mm -hmm. uh, that's the, the top of the top. Uh, looking forward to that. Yeah, that was going to be a big one. What can we be looking forward uh, to from, from you guys coming out over the next year? Yeah, Liquid IV, we got, we got some really cool, you know, we do these limited edition launches uh, just on our website only. So, you know, we're sold in, you know, 35,000 stores. So Costco and Walmart and Kroger and all that. But we do these really cool limited edition launches on our website where it's like a flavor that you can't get anywhere else or a celebrity collab. We have a really cool one coming up for Earth Day, which I don't think I'm really allowed to talk about yet, but it's going to be this really, really unique uh, packaging. Is it going to be John Denver? And Is it John Denver? Say it again. Is John it Denver? Be John Denver flying in a uh, helicopter? No. no Ooh, I think it was not. a Cessna. It was a Cessna. Oh, was it a Cessna? Just, yeah, yeah, just went right I mean, down. he's the one that wrote that Plant a Tree song, right? Yeah, yeah, for, yeah. For Arbor Day or yeah, whatever yeah, the yeah. fuck? Yeah, he did that. Yeah. He did that. And then RIP. Wait, isn't, what, what day is, uh, Earth Day is April the 21st or some shit? Is that right? It's coming. Yeah, it's coming up in like a week or like a week or something like that. Yeah. Hot yeah. Bob. Hot so Bob. I, 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 when 22nd. It? Sorry. Okay. Because the April the 23rd yeah. is fuck the Earth Day. 
Right. And then April 20th is Smoke the Earth Day. Well, that's also uh, Hitler's birthday. I is don't it really? Know, yeah, I mean, I don't. How did 420 end up? I, I, I know, I've read some stuff about that. I think it was some surfer dude that made it up originally back in the day and probably in fucking uh, on the on mid coast in California, let's be real, right? Mm hmm. But it's, isn't it a shame that it fell on one of the worst human beings' birthday of all time? Nothing you can do about it. My kid was born on the day that uh, Martin Luther King died. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, it's weird. So we were in the car two days ago. This is a true story. Super weird, but I'll, eh, that's what the show is, so fuck it. Um, we're in the car, and we're listening to U2. Um, it was just on the radio. Uh, I was in my mom's car back in uh, North Carolina. I was there for the weekend. Um, <laughs> I don't listen to the radio that much. And that U2, that old U2 song came on. Early morning, April 4th, shots rang out in the Memphis sky. And my, oh, and my kid's in the back scene. He goes, Dad, that's my birthday. What are they talking about? And I was like, oh, well, oh, that, that's when one of our nation's greatest leaders got assassinated. You want some uh, tendies? Wow. You want some chicken tendies now? Or, you know, I had nowhere to go with that. Um, are you allowed to chat about the celebrities that you're working with, that you're collabing with? Well, you did one with Justin Bieber not too long ago, right? Yeah, in uh, 2019, we kind of stopped. We were testing it out. We had some of these guys who wanted to be investors in the business. And so we thought, how can we, like, leverage it more than just, like, you know, them putting money in and not being able to work together on anything? So, um, yeah, we, we did one with Steve Aoki, who's, like, a, mm. a big international DJ, which was epic, the strawberry cake flavored is still our number one flavor by far. People are obsessed with it. And it was random. I was, I was with him. Um, I was with him at his house, actually. He was having a bir his birthday party. And he goes, we should do what? If, like, he throws a cake out at people's face at the end of his show. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, every every single show. Did he throw one at you at the end of that night? No, thank God. Thank God he didn't throw one at me. Yeah, so he, so he was like, yo, what if we make a strawberry cake flavor? And, you know, we're, we're, all, we're super healthy. And, you know, we're, we, we go towards the organic, healthy route. And, it's like, I don't know if that would work, but let me let me see what we can do. So we made a sample and I tried the first sample. Normally it takes like rounds and rounds of sampling mm. to figure out the right flavor. And I was like, oh my God, this is so, it literally tastes like a strawberry cake. And I sent it to him and he was like, dude, let's do it. So that was the first one we ever did. And that one blew up, which was epic. What's so cool about it is since we launched it only on our website, all of the other people who buy in Costco or Walmart or Amazon all come to our website to buy when we do these limited edition launches. So that was cool. We did a Justin Bieber flavor. He had a song called Yummy. And so we did a Yummy flavor, which was like this guava flavor, which was good. Um, we did one with Kygo, who's another DJ, mm -hmm. um, which was really cool. Like this pina colada. He has like very tropical music. So we made a pina colada flavor, which was good. So those are all ones we've done. I can't share what's coming up. We have some cool ones coming up. I'm, I'm not a lot. I'm, I'm signed, signed my life away not to talk about that. But uh, some really cool ones coming up. That's awesome. Um, let me ask you this. Uh, how's Biebs in real life? I, I don't, I've never met him. Is he cool? I, I, I didn't actually meet him in real life. I worked a lot with his team. We, we, uh, was yeah, it, was so it Scooter Braun? Life, but overall, he was in yeah, Scooter. Yeah. So Scooter's an investor and a, and a, and a good friend. And so, um, oh, I, shit. I, you know, He's worked, an investor in Liquid IV? It. Yeah, big investor. Dude. Mm. That guy's rad, yeah, man. Awesome. I worked with him years ago on a, on a movie, and uh, dude, takes all of his own phone calls, does all of his own shit. The Taylor Swift thing pissed me off, man, because he he's a great dude. Um, I love Scooter. I think Scooter Braun's awesome, by the way. Yeah, we, we, he's been a great partner. You know, we, uh, we sort of have this vision of, you know, doing this investor around with celebrities, which in the past, like, people had done it, but not the way we did it, where they all were going to do something in the business. And so... Now it's funny, we did that, and now like all of these brands are like, oh, we want to do that celebrity type around that Liquid IV did. It, you know, because it was much more than just capital. It was very strategic, and it really helped amplify the brand. So, yeah, it's been it's been awesome, you know, working together with him over the last three or four years. And so I did most of the Beaver stuff with him, but but Justin was awesome. You know, he shared everything he was supposed to. You know, the yummy flavor was sweet. And, yeah, it was, it was a really fun campaign. It was really fun. Man, that's awesome. Uh, I, I'd love to, I'd, I love to hear that. Um, mm -hmm. he seems like a good dude. I, that, that's why I don't, I've never ripped on that dude on the show. And, uh, Scooter's no. amazing. He's one of those guys who's got a, his hands in everything. You know, speaking of which that that's uh, Coinbase IPO just dropped a couple days ago. I was surprised to see how many celebrities were invested in that behind the scenes. Uh, Nas yeah. was one of them who got rich off well, of that. He's, he's in a lot of stuff. 
Nas is a lot of stuff. That's crazy. Yeah, uh, Kevin Durant um, Nas was one of the original investors. Even, in that. even Kevin Durant is one of the highest paid players in the NBA. He's making way more money in Silicon Valley, frankly, than he's making playing. Yep. Not, a, not endorsements, not salary. He's making more money in investments now. And, and, and obviously, here's where I'm going with this. Did you invest in some other cool shit out there, like after everything hit for you, where you were like, all right, I'm going to take this money because I believe in this and this and this the same way that other people believed in you? Totally. Yeah. It's been one of the more fun things is like basically ever since like the public announcement happened with the acquisition, like so many different founders and companies reached out, which is really cool. I think more less so for the capital, more so just the strategic piece. Like right. there's things we've done that has been really unique and they want me involved, which is, you know, it's sort of very humbling and really cool because I was on the other side of that a while ago. I think when you when you when you get when you get the bag right mm -hmm. it's like all of a sudden i was like oh that looks good okay let's do that let's do that do that i had to like take a deep breath and be like all right these deals like they're not running out anytime soon people are going to keep coming to me and like i need to take a deep breath like before i knew it i had already invested in like 12 different brands mm. <laughs> like within like three or four months so but it's really fun i mean honestly for me there were so many people who believed in me who probably shouldn't have and because of that I got my shot and I was able to go win and in turn, you know, I made them a lot of money. And so it's, it's really, uh, it's really cool to be able to be in that position for sure. Man, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, well, dude, you're a, a hell of a guy. Your story is incredible. We appreciate you, you being on today. Obviously, uh, liquidiv.com promo code drinking bros will get you 25% off. What I tell the audience is this, do not go to Costco and buy it and scream it in the cash registers, you know, uh, their, their face, uh, the, you know, the woman behind the cash register. Don't scream in her face, drinking bros, 25% off. Go to the website, just have it shipped to your house, Liquid IV. Promo code drinking bros gives you 25% off everything in the entire store. But if you're gonna, if you're gonna do that, record it. Right, and then send and it to send us. And send it to us, because that'd be funny. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just don't get banned from Costco for life. You don't have to deal with that shit. No, no, you don't. You don't want to be a face on the fucking wall in Costco. That, like, do not accept checks from this person. Yeah, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? yeah. Yeah, you don't want... Costco's a big company. Eh, they're okay. They're okay. Um, uh, we do this thing called Drinking Bro of the Week, which is someone who has inspired you or helps you become the person you are today. Who would you like to give the Drinking Bro of the Week to? Oh, man. Um... Probably my dad, man. My dad is, my dad's awesome. He's like best friend and also an incredible mentor, like quick note on him. And like he worked in a dairy shop on the lower east side of Manhattan for like his whole upbringing. His dad owned it, uh, moved to LA with like no money when he was 20. He started at an architecture firm um, when he was 20 years old, 21 years old and at a 200 person firm. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, 40 years later, he's now the CEO of a 6,000 person company. Holy so shit. he gives me so much advice and he's an incredible yeah, mentor and, and leader. And, you know, when I was growing up, he was working his way through it. So he wasn't there yet, you know, when I was in high school and college. But um, yeah, it's pretty incredible to have that relationship with him and for him to have followed his dream and it then gave me the opportunity to follow my dreams. And mm -hmm. so definitely yeah, the drinking bro of the week goes to Papa Cohen. That's awesome. Are we allowed to say what company it is? I mean, shit, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Gensler. It's an arch worldwide architecture firm, the largest in the world now. Wow. Wow. My God, man. I, yeah. You got any siblings? Like, you're just pouring I, out yeah. talent out of that family. I got a younger sister. Yeah, she, yeah, yeah. She's, she's a chef. She has her own, uh, like, like, home meal delivery <laughs> and personal chef thing. So, little entrepreneurial family for sure. Man, that is incredible. Wow, Gensler has a, uh, an office actually here right next to my apartment. Really? Mm -hmm. Man, maybe yeah, you should hop, in Austin, yeah. hop on I've down to there. Austin, man, and, uh, and join us. Um, yeah, I, look, I, anytime actually, you're in I'm town. I'm planning a trip. Yeah, when, when, yeah, are, you, when are you coming out here? I'm planning it June. I'll, I'll hit you guys up. I, let's grab a drink. Yeah, for sure. Perfect, yes. Uh, when you come in, come in, and then we'll, we'll hang out in, in studio as well, uh, and, and we'll do this uh, again. You're, you're an awesome guy, and we appreciate your time today. Um, thanks for being here, buddy. Yeah, I love it, guys. Thanks for having me on. Love what you do. I'm so glad we've been able to work together and Absolutely. stuff. Keep doing your thing. And I'll, I'll, hit, I'll hit you up when I come, uh, come to uh, Austin. Awesome. Cool, awesome. Good. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. Right. Good to see, see you. you guys. Um, we also have some other sponsors, Dan, who put this show on the air. Yep. Uh, that we got we to gotta get to in the, in the middle of the show, you know? Got to get to them. Uh, Ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros is one of them. 30% off yep. everything in the yep. entire store yep. and is the adjustable base 40 percent off so i have to go check the website i feel it like i do i feel like i do off, yeah. is it really or right, let me I'll, I'll check 
Let me check. Man, I don't know how they're doing it. I don't know how they're doing it. Uh, dude, I heard Ghost Bed, by the way, is in like uh, uh, Costco yeah, or something. Yeah, they're in Costco. Are well. they really? Yep. Damn it, man. Uh, everybody we're working with is blowing up. That's nice to see. Let's I'm, see. I'm a gigantic fan of those the guys. The code Drinking Bros gets you 30% off site wide. If you buy a mattress, you also get two free luxury pillows with that bitch. Okay. Um, let's see what else is going on. Yeah. So go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Today, as always, they got a 36 month page you go program, no interest there. So you can couple all those deals together with that one and get no interest. And you got about uh, 35 bucks a month in and out the door. You got a new uh, bedroom set, which is always a great sign, D'Anthony. Um, for you, dude, you watch baseball? You flip it on and, and uh, pop that thing up because you got the adjustable base. I so. do, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Sure it's, do. The goddamn greatest, isn't it? It is, yeah. Yeah. It's uh, very convenient for me. Otherwise, I would just be lying down with bed sores all the time. I, if I was single, I was, I was thinking about this the other day. If I was still single mm -hmm. and I had that adjustable base, I'd probably just watch sports and just eat little food in, inside my bed and not really yeah. move. Yeah. Yeah. Why would I ever leave? It, it's incredible. Uh, who do we got up next, Anthony? I got a... Uh, let's see. I got a blank one here. Uh, we got First Leaf. Actually, Ooh, you see a bunch right of it on here. the table Look right at this. here. Look at that. It's right there. Uh, we just did a little unboxing for them at uh, tryfirstleaf.com. Here's what I found out that, that angers me, Dan. Your selections are better than mine. That's because I'm doing it the way it's meant to be done. Asshole. I do it. I do it the no, way you know. it's meant to be done. I think you know more about wine than I do. Well, that's certainly true, but that's the point of the whole process. So for, for newbies, $29.99. Or twenty nine ninety five actually. Yes, twenty nine ninety five free yeah. shipping for free six shipping bottles, for just six bottles, just like here. Yeah, but uh, you have to put in notes and you have to put in accurate notes, right? Ah. After the fact, and then once you do that, they start to personally curate wines for you. Okay, right? that's how it works. So right. if you're not going back and putting the data back in, you're just getting a random selection every month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're 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 trying to help you, and you're failing it's not that i'm failing i don't know what to say like i don't know the right wine words well you know what uh that we should do this for a show one day but one of the things and we'll bring in tansy or something because he he went to small a school but one of the things you can do is you look down the list we would go through the cards mm -hmm. uh, hold on a sec yeah they're right there um and the, and the thing about this is by the way i've never had a bad wine there so it's not like i'm complaining no. um but yours yeah here so here's it looks tastier the, than mine and i'm jealous i'm a little jealous this today. is the raleigh pinot chosen better noir. Than this is chilean pinot uh and on the back of this card here you'll see uh ratings for the body acidity sweetness and tannin which you'll you'll learn what that means later on in the process but it also has a short paragraph here about the tasting notes. Mm -hmm. um, raspberries, pomegranate, white pepper. Uh, th those are the tasting notes. So what we would do, we would go through all of these and find the tasting notes and bring those things in and put them in a little tray. So we would have some raspberries, some pomegranate, and then some white pepper. Right. Right. And then you would taste that thing and then spit it out. And then you would drink the wine and be like, oh, okay, now I can sense that flavor. You're training your taste buds how to work properly, basically. Yeah. And when, when you order the six pack, whatever it is that you decide, because we mix and match uh, at my house because I got to, you know, my wife's got to have some input in it, obviously. Um, it, they do give you this card of each individual bottle. It also um, tells you what to pair it with. What to pair it with and then how much it would be if you were a non-member, right? right yeah. So this bottle here, this Whale Light Pinot Grige, is, uh, this would be 18 bucks yeah. if, if you were just buying this solo at the, gro yeah. at the grocery store. And the, like, the pairings for this Raleigh uh, Pinot Noir you see right here yeah. is uh, Wild Game uh, Leg of Lamb right? Mm -hmm. Like that's what I eat all the time. That's why I get this type of wine, right? Right. So I, I go back onto the site and like, what kind of foods do you normally eat? And I put in the exact kind of foods I'm going to eat. And they send me the wines that master sommeliers have said go best with that. That's why my wine collection is better than yours. Well, I'm just paying attention. That's all. Uh, you can do it too. It's not that hard. It's you just not gotta, that I'm not paying. I'm, I, I am paying attention. You man. have to I put just, the time it's in. the keywords, man. The keywords for me, but I love it. I look, I've never had a bad bottle. Well, the keywords are right. This is why you got to use this. Yeah. So you're just trying to figure it out on your own. Get on the back of these sheets yeah. and use these notes to tailor your fucking feedback. I, look, I've never had a bad wine, so I'm not complaining. No. I love it. I, lo I love it. And we all we get different ones every month. So uh, I'm, I'm all in. Go to tryfirstleaf.com uh, slash drinking bros on that $29.95 and free shipping at tryfirstleaf.com forward slash drinking bros. $29.95 and free shipping, dude, for six bottles. Yeah. Again, I'm going to say that six bottles, dude, $29.95. Yeah, even if you're shipping. just, you don't, 
you like wine but don't care about all the process and don't want to be in a wine club still you got to take that yeah that's a great deal it is it is uh we got anything else danny uh no just go buy some merch uh, there I, it is i don't know if the mugs will be live by the time this goes live mm -hmm. monday nights but um i hope they are they'll be live sometime next week as will hoodies yep and a couple of other things that jared's working on but uh defund politicians here you'll see this one and you'll see it in black and white you'll see the two are the one that ross has drinking bros uh logo on it boom and then there'll be one with just this big mug on it as well yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and then this the thing. uh is the defund politicians yeah this is it's a, it'll be on there and it'll be in black and white instead of red white and blue as well Ooh. so you'll have both options big fan of that uh d'anthony we got a little bit of breaking news here dmx who i love public memorial in uh in brooklyn at barclays center when your funeral is inside a sports arena you made it in this life i feel like i feel like you made it in this life you, well i mean he's it's a tragic tale it but is but i mean shit you, you have that many hits and then they you know kobe was tragic as well his was a staple center yeah uh i can't i'm trying to think how many people have actually had their funerals there He's living in LA all those years. Um, At Staples Center. I want to say, Mike, I know. I remember Michael Jackson's was. Ugh. Um, yeah, yeah. By the way, they still play his bullshit, and nobody says anything. Uh, yeah, he's the, he's the one piece of shit that just hasn't been uh, hasn't been canceled. Um, Nipsey Hussle had his funeral at Staples. Yeah, Center. that's right. Shit. Um, and but it's then, only it's only happened three times apparently. Hold on, there's Kobe. A, yeah, Kobe. Nipsey. Nipsey and who's the other one? Michael Jackson. Uh, was it? Yeah, it was, it was Michael Jackson. Yeah. Uh, Whitney Houston's they did in like New Jersey. Oh yeah, you're right. So yeah. I'm saying Whitney Houston, but uh, no, they, they did that in Jersey, and mm. I remember that was televised. I remember K Cos, dude. Kevin Costner spoke that bitch at Whitney Whitney Houston's memorial. That's yeah, he sad. brought down the house, dude. That's sad. Uh, he he was he was awesome, um, but yeah, Another. that's uh, that's a crazy one. When you get that big. Uh, yeah, there's actually a line in the new Drake song where he's just like, dude, we're going to do this at uh, wherever the Toronto Raptors play. Where do the Raptors play at, Hot Bob? Um, he was like, dude, we're going we're to shut this bitch down, and that's where I'm going to be. Big boy move. A lot of hits. <laughs> Did that, uh, uh, that catalog last week. This is some Canadian shit here. Um, Scotiabank Arena? Yeah, Scotiabank Arena. Yeah, yeah. Sky, uh, Con Air or something like that. They used, to, they, call it, they used to call it something else. I forget what it was, but whatever, man. Uh, that's some big Air boy Canada shit. Center. Air Before, Canada, yeah. that's it, yeah. But yeah. It, this, the word center is spelled wrong. Is it really? It, it's not centre, it's center. I know, I know, I don't yeah. understand it. Why would T-R-E be ter? That doesn't make any sense, Canada. Or yeah. England, fuck you guys. Wait, it's not the Tim Hortons <laughs> arena? Shut up. No, it's, uh, no. No, Tim Hortons arena is, uh, isn't that Vancouver's? <laughs> Dude, Tim Hortons, yeah, that's that's in Vancouver, man. I I have I, I told that story on the show. Like the cab driver oh, no, picked me in, up. That's in Hamilton. That that's oh yeah, that's real. That's real. Um, there was a cab driver. I did, I did a gig in Vancouver. There was a cab driver who picked me up, and we drove by two Tim Hortons, uh, like on the way to the hotel. And he was like, yeah. "Make sure to stop at Tim Hortons." And I was like, "Jesus Christ!" I was like, "You love Tim Hortons that much?" He goes, yeah. "Well, I own two of them. I own those two. And I was like, "What?" Yeah, they franchised early. And I go, I go, why are you driving a cab then? And he goes, oh, you know, property values over here? Mm. His house was like two or three million dollars. And he's yeah. like, man, I got two kids and all this other shit. And he goes, it's fucking brutal. And I was like, man, I uh, might want to think about popping on down the other yeah. side of the border, hombre. Well, well fun fact, my cab driver in LA had his doctorate. Really? In what country? Yeah, yeah what country? What, US? Pepperdine. Really? Pepperdine. Oh, well. And what was the- Everything's was the, still shut down out there. What was the PhD in? Education. There it is. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. No one cares. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta <laughs> shoot for the sky. Like how, why would you one. spend eight years learning how to learn? Yeah, wait. Was that Shaq? <laughs> um, it might have been. Because Shaq has his PhD in education. Yeah. That's, yeah. He's a doctor. Yeah, he's an honorary doctor. Yeah. Pamela Anderson's selling her house too today. That's a sad Good one for me. Speaking of Pacific Northwest, though, um, that weekend... Uh, they were going to the Canelo fight. Yes, May, 8th. May 8th. Yep. On May 9th, the Seattle Mariners are playing baseball in Texas against the Rangers, and Adam Ray is a huge Seattle Mariners fan. We should probably look at going to that. Oh, so I, I hit up Benny. Uh, yes, there's a, a it's at like 135. There's a Friday night yeah. game, yeah. Then there's a Sunday game that's at 130. The Sunday game is probably better, to be honest, because if we can go to the Sunday game, it'll be over by five, and then we can cruise out of there. 
back to here, drive back. We'll be Yeesh, here by eight. We'll be, we'd be rocked then. No, uh, not in the middle of the day on Sunday. We'll be recovering that day. Hey, you go to a baseball game, you're going hard. Have you been to a Rangers game before? Uh, n- not the uh, not the new stadium, no. So I went to the old stadium, and uh, they do shit different there. Like, that was one of the funnest stadiums I've ever been at. I don't get drunk at baseball games. Really? No, I watch them. But, I mean... So what, dude? I can drink watching doing anything. Not the way I watch. You've been you, you haven't been to a baseball game. I've not. Before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. No, it's it's worse than football. Remember that Eagles game where I started calling every play after play and then yeah. just got hammered afterwards? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In baseball, I just keep calling the plays all game. Yeah, uh, okay. Yeah. Um yeah, is he uh, is he sticking around? Yeah, he said he was like, Yeah, let's fucking do it. He wants to get box tickets and well, ben, we have seats right behind the dugout. So Benny hit us up for yeah. Friday night. Um behind the home or away dugout? Uh Third baseline. That's home, typically. Well, no, it's, that's the away dugout. Good. That'll yeah. work. Yeah. That'll work. A- Adam would love that, by the way. He's a huge Mariners fan. I'll, we'll hit him up after the show. Four seats. Um, and the and Mariners they- actually look really good this year, too. Do they really? Yeah, they're like, they're first in the division right now. Yeah, they're going to fucking fall off. We'll see. <laughs> they, are, they are in the position that Houston was in before they really made their turn. They have a lot of young talent. All they, but they need to reach into their farm system uh, sometime this summer and start trading guys to get you know, get veterans on the team. Right, right. You know, that they're in that spot now. We'll see. General management has the opportunity to make them a good team. We'll see if they can do it or not. Yeah. Yeah, we'll find out. I doubt it. Like, they traded Cano and Homeboy for all of those picks back in the day. And look, a lot of them hit, man. A lot of these dudes are really fucking good. And uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. We will see. We will see. I, it's, it's, it's the Mariners. It's, they haven't won in any championships ever, so let's face it. Not, yeah, they won 114 games in a season. Remember and that still year? didn't get out of the first round. Yeah. I want to say they maybe have one playoff series win to their name ever, if, if that. I don't. It's pretty bad. Yeah, it's pretty uh, They won that one against the Yankees where Griffey slid in to win the series, right? Mm. I think that's it. The one that Randy Johnson came in in relief? Yeah. Yeah. And then they played, lost to LCS, and I don't think they've done anything since then. Not really, no. Nothing. I mean, after that season, that team started to kind of crumble a little bit and go their own separate ways. Yeah. Um, I want to I want to chat about this Aaron Donald fight here. Oh, well, um, it wasn't really a fight, from what I can see from that video. This guy, did you watch this, the video? It's gone viral, obviously. Um, first, it was the 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 punch itself, and what this guy looked like after that. Um, and then I the the video popped up. Are we allowed to show it from TMZ? Do you think we're allowed to show that, Hot Bob? Or what's the? Let me see if I can find something else. Okay, um, because it would be cool to show. If you don't know who Aaron Donald is. He is an absolute animal, one of the very best uh, NFL players there is. Yeah, he's also a fucking mountain of a man. I well, he's 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 shorter than you think, right? Well, he's like six foot, six one. Yeah, six one, I think he is. And why short? Well, you, you think he's shorter than the six one? No. Either way, how do you get brave enough out at a at a club to say, you know what, fuck fuck you, dude? I think I can take on Aaron Donald. Yeah, dude, it's vicious. It's vicious. I want to put it up on screen, Bob. Hearing your gasp and audible gasp isn't enough for the audience. Yeah. Put it back. Go back. Yeah. I mean, it I don't. I don't think I've heard a noise like that. It was almost like you punch, like a whale got punched in the. You're talking about the noise. The Bob noise. Made? Yeah. It was like a. I was wrong. I was wrong. It was that a blowhole. Yeah. I mean, honestly, uh, so. Donald's agent has come out and said that he was actually trying to stop the fight. And it, from what the video, from what I could tell, he definitely was trying to stop shit. So the accuser, was the, is the accuser the guy on the ground getting kicked or is he one of the people kicking somebody on the ground? Fake Dan, do you know? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so well, what had happened was, if you haven't seen the video yet, I'm sure by the time this airs, everybody will have seen it. But if you haven't seen the video yet, there's four dudes kicking some dude on the ground. And then Aaron Donald comes up and fucking puts hands on one of them. And then they kind of back up a little bit. And then some other guy comes in when they try to start reattacking the dude and start spraying people in the face with, with pepper spray, I would assume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it looked like to me. Okay. Yeah. You got it, Bob? Yeah, it's TMZ. Huh? TMZ, are we allowed to use that? We'll see. Yeah, this TV's off right here. We'll Can you? See. Are we allowed to use it, you think? Who knows? I don't know why TM- TMZ would care. I mean, it's just going to make people go fucking One would think, check the right? video out. One would think. They're not going to check out some fucking replayed video on there our shit. There you go. It's not, the video's not that great. So go all the way to the beginning. All the way to the beginning. There you go. And, blow, and make it full screen, oh, please. Oh, shit. I'll, we'll promote them. Maybe they won't flag us for yeah, we'll it. It's TMZ up. Sports. Yeah, why not? There you go. Look at that. Oh, well, this is a different video, too. Yeah, see. There you go. That's oh, the dude shit. get thrown on the ground. Oh. Uh-oh. Okay. 
Huh? Well, I don't no, care. Donald, that's not Donald. Donald comes in later. Yeah, Donald comes in later and tries right, to right break it, it up. That's Donald right there. Okay. He's trying to stop this dude from getting the shit kicked out of him. And look, he how if Aaron Donald had hit you, you would know. He didn't even, it doesn't look like he even took a swing at anybody. He was just pulling people off of this guy. Yeah. And then you see some people try to re-engage. The guy in the backwards hat right there has got pepper spray out. And he's going to spray him in the face if they don't go away. See, and th this asshole is still trying to punch the guy on the ground. Whoever he, that is in that... Uh, he got one last kick in there. Yeah, whoever that is in that white hoodie right there is a fucking pussy. Hopefully that guy gets mouth cancer. Yeah, I, Aaron Donald didn't have anything to do with this. Okay. No, All of right. course yeah. not. How about the guy, though, that... Like Donald's buddy who actually just pulled him off. Yeah, who is Aaron Donald's friend who pulled Aaron Donald off of somebody? Because people in the NFL can't do that. No. I, I mean, mean he just signed he, that guy. He moved Aaron around like he was a fucking child. Yeah, put... Uh, put Put that guy in the Cowboys. I'm going to adopt the Cowboys him. need some defensive help. <laughs> yeah, well, they're going to draft some soon, but I don't know who. Get that guy. Um, the other wild one I saw today was the uh, the Bobcat mm -hmm. that, that jumped on that woman's back, Bob. Did you see that one? And uh, Homeboy came running out, grabbed the Bobcat. It was, a it was like a baby Bobcat. No, I think it was. <laughs> it looked like a fairly adult Bobcat. I don't... You play this video. It's on my Twitter. Uh, there, there you go. Is. There you go. A, you can turn up the volume on it, too. There is volume in this video. I was surprised. I was like... I need to wash my car. Uh, I like that. Listen. Oh, my God! What the hell? Yeah. Relax, dude. It's, it's a, a fucking bobcat. A bobcat. Relax. Yeah, dude. No, he did exactly what he should do. No, for sure. But just after exactly that, exactly what he should do. Who did that? I, I forget who it was on Twitter. I I reposted it, Bob. But, but she said something like, "Sometimes you gotta yeet a bobcat." <laughs> Who's Jessica O'Donnell? Because that's a pretty funny state. I she don't know. Or something? She's from The Blaze. Oh, oh, really? That's funny. Jesus is King, social media editor at The Blaze. I don't uh, even. I don't even check it. Texas, I just Texas do it. Aggie. I just, uh, uh, ah, Texas Aggie. All right, dude. I mean, Bobcats attack seven thousand people per year. Men between the ages of seventeen and twenty-seven are the primary victims. I yes. don't know why they would have that data. Dude, my 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 it, mom was run, was uh, like out running one time, and uh, and there was a bobcat that that crossed the trail. And there is signs, to be fair, that are mm. posted in like neighborhoods and shit like that, of like if bobcats live in your area. Because they are dangerous creatures, but they're not gonna like do. They're not gonna kill you. No, bobcats they don't could. seem to they're kill anybody. Small. Would you risk it? It's not a mountain lion. It's not like a panther. But with 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 what that guy did, he picked I mean, it up and everything just I can find through it. it. Some, I love somebody, I love that. Somebody actually wrote an article about this in December, and they said everything I could find says there are no documented fatal attacks against humans. Don't believe it. Um, I do. It's a fucking uh, tiny ass house it. cat. There's. The attack rate, oh, that's not, I don't care about that. Yeah, it, it's, it doesn't seem like, they lump bobcats and coyotes together. Yeah, but the, some th of that data. the thing with, I don't think a bobcat would kill you, but like, it, if anyone's ever been scratched up by someone's asshole house cat, yeah. like imagine that, but yes. now a little bit bigger and the claws are worse and it knows how to use them. Yeah, yeah well, it's, not a, it's not about rabies. That's a, that's another thing. Are you saying a bobcat can't kill you? Bobcats are extremely dangerous. I, yeah, no, I would, no, they're, no, they're not. It, you, you punt the shit out of a bobcat. Let me, let me stop you right there. When something is extremely dangerous, or yeah. at least somebody's saying that, and there are no fatalities recorded, I'm going to challenge that. Yes. Exactly. They're too small. I don't it's think It's almost so. like this uh, last year or so, people have been telling me certain things are dangerous, and I'm like, I don't think so. Man, I wouldn't want to risk it. Like a mountain lion's going to Here, the problem is infection. I it, like what that guy did like, a lot. I've gotten, I've, I've been scratched by a cat before, like just on the top of my Same. hand. I hate I'm it. like, I don't care about that, but it gets, like, it, there's a minor infection and it hurts for yeah. like a week, yeah. which is a minor inconvenience and not at all extremely dangerous, as Giorgio right. just said. You're right, You're, if you die, it's probably because you don't go to the doctor. You get infected. Yeah, you get like staph <laughs> infection in your hand or some shit like that. It's like, you know... No seven-year-old with a knife is going to kill you, 
but he can still stab you. No, yeah. a seven-year-old yes, is not getting me with a knife. I'm with you. Not unless I'm sleeping at the time. D- d- this lady didn't even see it coming. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You're turn, you got your back turned. You're carrying a little suitcase or whatever. Some st- seven-year-old comes up, stabs you in the calf. Yeah, a seven-year-old can't move quickly or quietly enough no. to sneak up on me. No. There's no way. Check it out. What if it did? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Can yeah. you imagine? <laughs> I will defend Dan on this one, having a six year, or a seven-year-old now, because he's turned Not seven last weekend. Shit. Um, yes, dude. He, he, would, he wouldn't be able to sneak up on you. No way. Um, and he's trained in the art of jiu-jitsu. Yes. Yes, he is. And uh, he wouldn't warrior. be able to sneak up on you at all. Since four, he's been in jiu-jitsu since he was four years old. He wouldn't be able to sneak up on you. Only because he laughs, like he giggles and gives it away. That's you know? what I do, too, when I'm attacking somebody. It did not come in handy in combat, by the way. No. <laughs> I was just tettering the whole time. Like, are you guys excited? They're like, shut the fuck up, Dan. Jesus Christ. I did actually one time uh, for long time, long time fans of the show. If you remember my buddy, Jeff Taylor coming on. Some, what was it? Two years that ago. That was a fun, that was a fun night. Yes. Yeah, I yeah, remember he, Jeff, yeah. He, we used to be roommates too. Uh, one time we got in a gunfight and he and I are one side of the room. My first sergeant and medic are on the other side of a room, not on a room, uh, road. And we're just bounding up and down, covering each other and shooting and then letting the other guy move and just advancing on this dump truck. Every time I would squeeze the trigger, I would yell, pew, 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 pew. pew. <laughs> and he's, Jeff finally just stopped shooting. There's still shit going on. He just stops shooting yeah. and then fucking really deliberately turns around and looks at me, shut the fuck up. I'm like, <laughs> all right, I guess I could do that. I had a lot of good, I had a lot of fun that day. I bet you did, dude. The guy that, whose truck got blown up, not so much. But. No, no, I'm sure he had a rough time getting home. Dan not a lot of Ubers out there. No, he was fine. It just blew up the back of the fucking glass on the truck. It was fine. All right, all right. He was fine. I'm sure he had TBI, though. <laughs> I mean, that sucks, but yeah. you, you don't know at the time. Obviously, yeah. Maybe reach out to him. Uh, I will, yeah. yeah. Put, him, put, put him, Facebook right put there. a message in a bottle and, uh, and see where it goes. Uh, I'm gonna, we're going to give out uh, one more drinking bro of the week here um, since we're, uh, we're at the end of the show. Uh, if we have a guest on, we typically give it to them. Uh, sometimes, you know, uh, people are busy and they got to bounce, but it's also nice to give out our own drinking bros of the week. And you can submit yours at drinkingbros.com. Comes right to the old inbox live on air. Um, if we've missed it by any chance, just uh, resubmit it. It'll come back in, and then, and then we'll do it. And then uh, that's where you can get all that merch that uh, Dan was talking about on drinkingbros.com. Now that we're stocked to the hill. This one's new. Uh, gay for straight, dude. Yeah. I finally got if it. If you're in Texas and you don't own I one of these it. shirts yet, you're fucking out of your... Come on, man. Out of your mind, Give me dude. a break. Out of your minds. Uh, this one was submitted by Sam Mizadra from Hawaii. Uh, Hawaii. A uh, member of Drinking Bro for two years and is nominating... Brandon Merritt. Reason for the nomination. Today is my best friend Brandon's birthday. We've been best buds since elementary school, and he's always been such a great dude. Even when I'm 5,000 miles away or around the globe on deployments, he still shoots me emails or hits me up every day to play games and shoot the shit. Uh, he fucking sucks at Warzone. <laughs> he wants everybody to know that. Yeah. Um, uh, I like how he put that in there of like, hey, I want everybody to know. That uh, Brandon Merritt sucks at this is what This is what we're losing uh, with all the weird editing going on on Facebook. Like, you can't have friendly conversations where you shit talk anymore. No. We, we have a plan, by the way, uh, before you finish that. Our plan is to come up with code words for all the shit talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then just yeah. start going full ham and <laughs> Facebook can go fuck itself. <laughs> Uh, Anyways. It, yeah, it says here, uh, I got him into Drinking Bros last year, and he immediately became a huge fan. Uh, so can we raise a glass and get a big old get fucked yeah, for get Brandon? Fucked. There yeah. you go. Yeah, get Brandon, fucked, Brandon. You suck at Warzone, guy. Yeah. Do something. Yeah. Fucking get better. Yeah. Be better. Be better, I guess. At yeah. life, which is something we've been trying to get Jared to do forever. <laughs> Speaking of Jared, uh, well, no, this will come out after that. Yeah, we're doing a live, a live show on Sunday. So yep. you've already caught that at this point. You've already points. missed it. So uh, congratulations. But uh, yeah. look, if you're in the Austin area, we have a bunch of these. We have a bunch of events going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kentucky is one. Uh, Louisville. Hit us up if you know a great bar for Friday nights, the night before the Kentucky Derby mm-hmm. in Louisville. I'm trying to figure out a bar for that sitch. I don't. We're not going to do a show or anything. We just want to hang out with you guys. Yeah, we're going to party. Um, and then uh, you and I are doing a Kentucky Derby uh, live betting show the morning yeah. of. Ordered those suits last night, by the way. Mm-hmm. We're, we're going to look like a couple of assholes <laughs> for real. 
I remember texting you and I was like, so do you want the the one with the horsies on the suit or do you want the horseshoes? Yeah, I don't know why you said horsey instead of horse, by well, the way. I mean, what, I guess what I call it. You have children now, so. Yeah, yeah. I don't call it steed because I don't, I don't know that you know what that means, you know? Uh, yeah, I, that's a weird, a steed is a very specific kind of horse. Goddamn right it is. So I don't know why you would even say God that. Damn right it is, because it wasn't a steed on that fucking suit. I didn't notice. I didn't really look at the horse. I just wanted the horseshoes. I, I wanted the steed one. It's always nice when your friend picks the other one because I wanted the other one, but uh, it was sold out. So I had to go with mm. the, uh, the the roses, the roses suit, mm. the run for the roses. That's suit. fine. So uh, that'll be a good time. We'll be in Louisville, and uh, and we'll try to do a, a meet up and hang out with everybody, and then do a show in the morning before the derby starts mm. about uh, all our bets on mybookie.com. Promo code drinking bros will double that deposit on mybookie.com. We're going to be betting on the Derby and then attending it live in person. Uh, should be a blast. I, I have not heard whether or not Kentucky's open or what the fuck their story is. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. So it's going to be open for me. Well, I know there's 30,000 people at the Derby. What is it usually? What's the mat? What's capacity? There? Uh, 130? 130. 130. Yeah. It's wow. fucking huge. That's yeah, huge. So it's going to be, we're going to get a real experience here. Uh, it, it, yeah, you're gonna. It'll be one of the best of all time. Yeah, that's what I was telling somebody about the Masters too. I was so pissed off. I was like, "You'll never get the Masters at twenty percent capacity, where you can just." I think that that'd be rad for the Masters. I don't know if I'd be into it for the Kentucky Derby. Uh, I am going to be into it because yes. I can still do all that stupid shit without people bumping into me all the time. Yeah. I'll, although I will yeah. say this, I was at the Grand Canyon last weekend, uh-huh. uh, or the weekend before last, I guess, uh, and man, it, I was so angry. <laughs> the Grand Canyon? Yes. So yeah. much beauty? Yeah. Well, angry. no, it wasn't the beauty. It was that we have all of this, mm-hmm. and there's still some mouth-breathing Midwestern fuckface standing right here breathing on my neck. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Get the fuck out of here, dude. I came here to not see you. Yep. You know, specifically you, you fat turd. Get the fuck out of here. But no, every time you turn around, it's some fucking dum-dum standing right there like, oh, man, I don't know what to do with it. It's like you haven't been outside before. Like, what is all this? The Grand Canyon's huge, it too. Is, it's fucking huge. There's so much space. There's like, uh, uh, there's 25 lookouts. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And there weren't even that many people there. They, I think maybe in total for the two hour and a half, two hours I was there at the viewing spots taking pictures and shit, maybe saw 150 people. Maybe. Yep. Yep. But somehow still there's the one mouth breather that's just standing right there. It's like, uh, psh- it's like that episode of It's Always Sunny when D's on the bus mm-hmm. and the dude just like standing right there next to her breathing out of his mouth. And she goes, could you just not do that? And he throws up on himself. Yeah. That's what it's like yeah. to be at the Grand Canyon. <laughs> Fuck the Grand Canyon. <laughs> Fuck nature. Although I got some really cool pictures there. I bet. You, yeah. you have the best camera of the all way, time in that lens. Yeah, by, yeah, it is. And by the way, uh, Eva Marie was actually hiking through the canyon while I was there. I'm like, why didn't you fucking say something? Man? Well, it's a big canyon, Dan. No, but she's, she was like, we could have we fucking got dinner because her and Jonathan and all those uh, and, and one of her friends was there. I'm like, yeah, we could have. Yeah. But I can't read your mind. Yeah, dude. obviously. Obviously. I, I was uh, working late the other night with, uh, with fake Dan here, and he told me a crazy story um, about somebody dying in the Grand Canyon. And I was like, how is that possible? Uh, it just doesn't seem possible. Oh, no, somebody... you could definitely fall over the edge in one of those. How? What That's what mean? I asked him. I said, dude, how can you fall over the fucking edge? People the do stupid shit all the time. What do you mean? Like the rails are like, they're like belly high in some place. Yeah, yeah. He just, he went to a place he wasn't supposed to go and <laughs> lost his foot in. So here's oh, the is that what it was? It, yeah. It's, it's okay. not, it's not fenced incredibly well. Like there's spots where you can sneak through and climb out onto rocks and get a better look. Yeah. I would recommend taking the look you were provided. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You really don't want to go off, off. The no, uh, trail any at any national park. There was no. a uh, the fuck a, is wrong with you? There was a person a couple years ago who was on like a little uh, post college like rumspringa find himself like trip or whatever, and he went to Yosemite, went off the trail, and was like, "I'm gonna skinny dip in a hot spring," oh, and yeah. he dissolved because it was acid. Oh my oh, god! God damn it, dude! Yeah, Eesh. and uh, so no one found him ever because he didn't exist anymore yeah, it didn't, it physically didn't have a, a so body. what you're saying is if you got or a body bones. you need to get rid of <laughs> yeah do you there have you that go. location or um yes drop me a pen to that also <laughs> that asshole in uh into the wild or whatever he ate the wrong berries and died like a dickhead alone yeah, yeah. don't eat the berries yeah, in the wild the man just fucking find a squirrel rip its head off and eat everything get the squirrel like, died, seriously dude. Yeah, it's easy squirrels are fucking idiots 
It, that's that squirrel dye is a delicate. You testament. can. I'm not even kidding. You can crush up an acorn and your in the palm of your. I promise you, this works. You can crush up an acorn in the palm of your hand. I did this when I was like eight years old all the time to catch squirrels because mm-hmm. I like to fucking. I, I like to. I, I was trying to rehabilitate. Is not the right word. Uh, <laughs> the squirrel. I was trying to make one my pet. Okay. Because they're yeah. uh, they're pretty. They like nuts so much and they're stupid that yes. you can convince them to fucking hang out. And when I actually, Jeff Taylor and I had a pet squirrel named Steve <laughs> for a year. And then Steve had kids and we're like, you piece of shit. Yeah. I don't, I don't who know. Got uh, who got the squirrel? Who got it? Yeah. Fuck it. What, yeah. Who fucked it? What do you mean who fucked it? Or um, what do you mean who got it? Uh, wait, like when, when Steve went off and had kids, like, did you guys say, hey man, can I take the squirrel or who's taking it? No, it's a squirrel. But I want, as a so child, what? I wanted a squirrel for a pet because I thought they were funny and cute. They jump around and shit, yeah, and they yeah. also like nuts. And it seemed easy because they would approach me all the time. Animals would approach me all the time when I was a child. I had a pet crow for a while named George. He would fucking sit on my arm when I was at the bus stop outside of my house. Mm-hmm. He would sit there and hang out. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, little did they know, I was mass murdering animals sure. all the time. Sure. Anyways, not so true. Uh, yeah. But. Uh, uh, the the squirrel thing you crush up an acorn in your palm and just fucking sit down on the ground indian style and don't move and just leave your palm there and they will they will walk right onto your palm you, you just go to them. a college campus and a squirrel will just come up on your yeah, shoulder. If, you're, yeah. if you go to a fucking yeah. place that has a lot of foot traffic squirrels are a little too con- actually the ones in the dog park next to my place have gotten a little out of hand yeah they're starting to taunt the dogs mm-hmm. like this one squirrel i got some video of it maybe i'll post it someday but this one squirrel is sitting on top of a limb but it's only about six or seven feet in the air and it's just staring down at my dog just staring at him and then my dog runs over to the other side and the squirrel turns around and stares at him more and i'm like are you flexing dude yeah. what's going on here like you can't get up here bitch uh, there's he, something to, there's something to it we i think just a, trying to intimidate him we did a story one of the crime corners on uh on Ross Patterson Revolution was a guy in Alabama who was feeding his squirrel meth. Oh, yeah, uh, I remember that. Yeah. And uh, Trying to make it into an attack squirrel? Yes. Yeah, I remember that. Yes. Yeah. Mickey J. Pollock or Paul, I'll never forget his name. I hit him up on Facebook and asked him to come on the show. <laughs> and uh, he said, yes, he would come on the show. I was the like, oh, man, it's going to be him. him. Um, what did he, he goes, end up? Did he get in? Well, well, he got arrested like two days later, so we, we never got to do the episode. Oh, and I was I like, see. fuck, man. Um, he's out now. I, we're Facebook friends. Isn't that weird? What did he get charged with exactly? Was it like animal endangerment or whatever the you're fuck? You're not allowed to have pet squirrels, I think. Well, you're also not allowed to give squirrels meth, I would imagine. No, no. Or possess meth or eh. whatever else, yeah, right? Yeah. I'm imagining 12-year-old Dan with like a horde of squirrels at his like beckoning, sicking them on people. No, mm-hmm. I wouldn't do that because I don't want to put the squirrels in danger. I... People can just stomp a squirrel. And besides that, if I wanted to... Uh, uh, get violent i would do it myself yeah i would. wouldn't i'm not gonna rob myself of that opportunity and give it to a bunch of bitch-ass squirrels fuck that yeah fuck that fuck that uh get out there in the open people we're gonna be meeting and greeting uh we'll be in louisville on may 1st yep. uh and 2nd for the derby uh and april 30th so april 30th that night the friday nights uh may 1st at the derby tickets yep. are available on drinking bros Tickets.com. It will be in Dallas, seven, uh, eight, and then, nine, probably. Yes, and we'll be in Dallas on seven, eight, nine, uh, May 7th, 8th, and 9th. Uh, the 8th will be at the Canelo Fights. Uh, the tickets will be available for that as well. Yeah. And then maybe the Mariners game on Friday night or S- Sunday. Sunday. We'll figure it out, yeah. E- yeah, either way. Uh, but you can come on out to that. Um, it's good to see people out and about. They were just panning to uh, some of the, the hot ass women at the, the Cubs game. Yeah, and I saw. Uh, a very American thing, which was uh, uh, a Pakistani guy or a Sikh, mm-hmm. one of the two, with an American flag mask on. Yeah. You like, you like to see that. Yeah. Sikhs, Sikhs are good people. I, we're not going back to that whole Wisconsin thing, but that's one of the dumbest things that's ever happened. That dude that tried to mask kill a bunch of fucking Sikhs. Like, you don't know the difference, dude. It's, you got a phone in your pocket. Yeah. Look it up. Yeah. Just take a picture of him and ask Facebook, hey, is this a Muslim? Like, if you're going to be that big a piece of shit, at least be accurate. People are dumb, dude. People are really fucking dumb. Really and dumb. Sikhs are like the nicest people of all time, by the way. Yeah, they're fucking Sikhs. Of all dude. the fucking people that you could fuck with. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Idiots. I like Sikh people. Yeah. Uh, what's your favorite Sikh food? Uh, I mean, they're Indian, so it's Indian food a lot. Is it really? Yeah, I don't know if there's specific Sikh food. All right. But I do love Indian food. Test your Obviously, knowledge, Tikka dude. masala. Yeah, you bet. It's the shit. You bet. Uh, Although I don't think they would put chicken on it because they're all vegetarian over there. That's kind of an American thing, isn't it? I f- fuck if I know, dude. Hmm. You know, I'm 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 a American food guy all the way. Where it's like, 
even Mexican food, I like it to be Americanized. Nah. Sour cream all over that. Well, it bitch. depends. Yeah, I like I like Tex Mex food a lot. Yeah. I think that's just because I grew up eating it. But for when when I'm going uh, Indian or Korean or something like that, I'm not really interested in fusion. Okay. Like I like Loro here. That's that's interesting because it's barbecue and it's meat. And let's I mean honestly, if you do any meat fusion, I'm in. Cool. Doesn't matter what it is. But uh, by the way, you had the best uh, line of the month so far. Mm. I suggest you take the view that you were provided. Yeah, um, that's. It's, uh, a good piece me. of advice in yeah. life. And I, I, we're going to leave on that note yeah. because that's important. Mm. Take the view you were provided out there. For D'Anthony D'Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Take the view you were provided, everyone.